Well, okay, we'll call the meeting of the order. First thing on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. With we have an addition. So we'll move to the second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Citizens to be heard. Anybody in the audience would like to speak? Anna, you want to talk about your sister at all or anything? <laughs> Now's the chance to do it, okay? I <laughs> uh, have bills here yet? Uh, they are here, yeah. I'll they move, are here. Okay, pay yeah. bills. Payment of the bills? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next. Next thing, we'll go into uh, Shelley or and Janelle. You come and give us a report on the probation department. Good morning. Uh, this is Janelle Sheeney. Is yep. That, thank, thank you. Okay. Yep. Um, we did provide a written uh, update, and so maybe I'll just expound on that. Um, kind of updated on staffing. Uh, we haven't had a lot of turnover. Pretty consistent. Uh, I believe that there's one new agent in the contract office. Um, since the last time we came before the board, and that person did come as an experienced agent. Um, he's actually a career agent, used to uh, work ISR for the DOC, and so he's gaining some juvenile experience now. Uh, the felony office has also stayed pretty consistent. We do have two new support staff um, that we're working through training process and stuff. Um, we've hired three contract writers to write um, pre-sentence investigation reports for the court to take off some of that burden from our agents so that they can kind of focus on supervision aspects of probation. Um, we are looking to take on a fourth contract writer um, to also alleviate that. One of the benefits from that is that as, um, as we're in a position to house some of the inmates at other facilities. Um, our agents haven't been easily able to meet with the um, defendants to do the pre-sentence investigation reports. And with having some of the contract writers, we're actually do, doing more over the phone, what we can do over the phone, and not having them transported back and forth and those kind of things to alleviate some of that pressure as well. Um, kind of talks about caseloads. Uh, they're, they're active, they're high. Um, we've asked agents to kind of prioritize. We do use risk assessment tools to ascertain who's high risk, who's medium risk, those kind of things, and that determines how often we meet with each client. Uh, the report talks about the community service work in the community and the STS program, and there's some specific information about that. Um, one of the things that I'd like to highlight now, I, you know, there's some social media talking about cemeteries and Memorial Day coming up and community members being upset going out to some of the cemeteries and I just learned that um, our STS crew actually was, without being told, going out to some of the cemeteries and cleaning them up and getting them prepared um, for the community while they go out and do those things. We did, on the STS program, we did have one um, substantial injury, um, but that claim went through the state. Um, other than that, everything has been, been good. Uh, we have the juvenile restitution program, and we'll note that um, approximately $6,000 was paid out to victims, so that's a, a good program that we would like to continue. Um, we also participate in three specialty courts. We have the drug court here in Clay County, They've started the victim court, which we do have one active member because it just started recently. They have two pending referrals for that. And then the domestic violence court, which all of our agents do actively participate, the adult agents actively participate with that and support that. Um, the biggest issue that we're coming before the board um, to update is the reentry service program. We've had two staff that have worked under a grant um, and other collaborative funding and those kind of things, but the grant um, has ended and we are lacking funding to continue with that. And so we're approaching the board to see if um, Clay County would um, financially support these two positions. 
Um, the two reentry positions work with kids to reduce out of home placement. Um, there have been some statistics provided at cost savings, um, what effect it's had on out of home placement, uh, those kind of things. And so it is um, a very vital program that we would like to continue. Um, there's many other agencies, social services, <coughs> juvenile detention center, um, are in support of it. Um, we know the county is going through a lot of changes currently, and so adding this to the plate is um, certainly not what we had hoped for, but the funding is running out, and um, so we just bring that before the board, and I don't know if Shelly wants to add any. Mr. Chair. Do you guys have questions? I do have a question. Okay. Yeah. Good. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. As I spell <coughs> one. My question is, uh, with the grant, is there any availability to search out anything similar to reapply and, and write for more grant funding? Yes. I mean, we keep watching all the time. Okay. <clears throat> the main OJP grant they have not come out with an RFP, and according to the grant manager, it doesn't look like they may come out with one this year. The YIPA funds would continue, the youth intervention funds. We have 45000 going into 2017, and then the collaborative funding should continue also, but it's still... So if we were appro to approve the funding, if then a grant were to come out, would you be able to use those grant dollars for an existing employee, or would you, or would that not be applicable if it's an existing employee? I think it depends on how, what the grant, how the grant is written. Most of them, I think, most grants speak to creating a position or sustaining that, so it all depends. Okay. And I believe um, in speaking about those, um, if the YIPA continued, if the, um, those dollars continued, I believe that's 35000 And then the collaborative grant is 31000 and so we're still looking at 130000 Okay. to be covered as far as salaries. Okay. Any other questions with the reentry staff, please? So your budget will cover the 130000 right? That you no. have now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, another thing that we can speak to is um, our ongoing um, support of internships through the probation office. We have a lot of colleges in the area. Um, a lot of um, applicants put in to do internships. We can't always offer to everyone, but um, in cases where we can't, we often offer the ability to job shadow. Uh, we really want people, kids, students, to experience um, what probation is all about, make a determination whether they want to pursue law enforcement, corrections, probation, work with adults, work with juveniles, um, give them the opportunity to experience a little bit of it to help them make some decisions about their careers. Any, any questions for me? I think that's basically kind of the update as far as the departments. Mr. Chairman, um, the, the, um, going back to the reentry service project, the, the grants run out at the end of 2016? Our OJP grant will be done in September. Our YIPA grant, we have one that will flow into 2017, but it's only $45,000. Okay. And then we will get collaborative funding on July 1st of 2016 to finish this year. Okay. And then we will get, hopefully, collaborative funding July 1st of 2017 again. So the funding is secure through September? It will actually be able to go through most of this year. We may be a little <coughs> short come December. Okay. Okay. You know, I think um, as we move forward, I think, you know, I think before any we decide on this, I think we need to take a look at that along with, I noticed that we have on our agenda today our first discussion about a 2017 budget and, and I think it's gonna be important for us to be able to take a look at what all of our needs are in every department before we commit to, to anything. So, but uh, I, I'm glad to hear at least that this program can sustain itself while we go through that process. That's, that's important, so. Right. All right, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. <coughs> 
Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for the update. <clears throat> Matt, do you want to take our next step approval of the fill of position <coughs> due to retirement? Sure. The sheriff stepped up. Conveniently had a call. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning Matt. Matt. Um, before you is a proposal to fill a full time uh, deputy's position. Uh, Deputy Tim Griffin uh, submitted his letter of retirement effective. Um, August 31st. August 31st. So we would like to uh, replace him. As you know, with law enforcement, the, the whole training program, the hiring program, uh, not uh, too unlike any other county process, is really lengthy. Uh, we'd like to start this a little bit early to get a jump start on uh, at least replacing him before August 31st. <clears throat> um, I would also like to note that uh, this is going to be the first of many that we have in our office. I did a quick count. I think in the next six years, we should replace 12 people through retirement. So that's about, that's over a third of our office will be. Uh, that's not uh, including the two of you, is it? No, oh. actually that's not including the sheriff. No. <laughs> so it could be 13. So uh, anyway, it, it, we're looking at some challenges in our office and turnover. Um, I think we're gonna be here you know, a couple times a year to replace employees. So this is just the start of it, how it, it's just kind of funny how it worked out that way, but, so. I'll move to replace the deputy position. I second the motion. So, so, um, Matt or Bill, is this, um, so this is a lieutenant's position, right? No, this is a deputy's oh, position. Oh, it's just a deputy position, okay, right. okay. Uh, we currently have an oh, old, deputy. Okay. We, we have a list that we uh, hired off of a few months ago. We're going to see if we can't fill that position off of that list. Uh, regardless, um, we're gonna have, we anticipate another retirement in April of next year, so um, the, uh, the memo to the board suggests that we're gonna advertise. We would still like to advertise in maybe um, August, September, uh, so we can get a jump start on the April hiring as well. But uh, obviously we'll go to the board before that for approval, but at least to start that advertising, we would like to get that going this fall. Okay, okay. we've got a motion to replace uh, Deputy Tim Griffin. All in favor? All right. right. Opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Thank so, uh, Mr. Chairman, while, while Matt and the Sheriff are here, um, Matt, I, I, I don't know how much longer you, you plan on being around, but I know you've been, um, these last few years, you've really played a critical role with the sheriff and uh, all of the sheriff's budgeting. Um, and I, I hope as you contemplate when your time comes that, uh, that we have somebody in the works who can really learn what you're doing and what you've done because you've done an amazing job um, with that whole budget. Uh, thing and that, that's a big budget that the sheriff's department has and I Bill, I think you would attest to the fact that Matt's probably the guy who's been probably have doing to leave it when he leaves so, yeah. so, <laughs> I, so I, I just you know I, I don't know that you can for something that complicated I don't know that you could start too early in at least um, letting somebody else know what's between your ears uh, when it comes to budgeting and, and yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're we're see. not going to let you retire <laughs> if that's the case so yeah so. <laughs> we'll, let him, we'll let him keep his cell phone. Yeah. yeah. And you'll see that this June. You'll see other people at this table at least. Okay. Uh, Starting that. Right. And that as process. we know, um, okay. an elected sheriff, it's a different dynamic, could be a different chief deputy. You just don't know. So I think our plan going forward is to show, pass on knowledge to several people. Sure. So that uh, Good. there's Good. no hiccups as we go along. Right. So thank you. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. I think the next item on the agenda is a very important announcement, and I'll, I'll let Brian make that announcement. So. <laughs> Looks like he's in a good mood, too. Yes, very good mood. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Chair and Commissioner. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you have a short memo in front of you, and uh, you're aware of it in your packet, too, but. 
uh, Vicki Reek, our senior administrative assistant around here and, and our nerve center has uh, decided to retire after just about 25 years, 24 and a half, something like that. So, and as I stated in the memo, uh, she's an extremely dedicated full-time employee that uh, we do not expect to, f to fill the person, but we want to replace the position. So uh, that's why I'm here today. And, uh, uh, you know, Vicki has just been an outstanding employee. She, um, she's, if you remember the show MASH and Radar, if you're gonna sign something and you say, oh, Radar, and, and they hand you the piece of paper for the signature, that's about how <laughs> Vicki functions. Uh, around here she knows what you need to do before you need to do it and and that is so invaluable and you don't find that in a lot of employees so we're um, we've been just really blessed around here you folks have been for the, the 25 years that she's been here so uh, yeah it'll be a, it'll be a real challenge to to go ahead and fill that position but sometimes we get a lot more out of the position than the position requires and that's the case with Vicki so. So, Mr. Chairman, I just think that if uh, if our administrator wouldn't have accepted her resignation, we wouldn't even have to be dealing with this. So, so I'd put the blame on him. You know, I was going to put the blame back on the board. You know, the board wields a lot of authority, and, and you could just reject that. I sent you copies. Well, I move we reject it. <laughs> Why do you think she's retiring? <laughs> That's true. That was a challenge in itself. But uh, uh, you know, I know, and I know once in a while and and we're heading into the budget process and and uh, i think it's fair of you to say do we need to fill every position and frankly um vicky and i i guess haven't talked about this but i'll, I'll tell you we're we're just really swamped right now i think you know the special projects that are going on in this county and uh, it, it, I don't want to say we have all, all to do to keep our heads above water, but just to meet the deadlines and, and some of the things that are going on. And, and uh, I can't just say the jail and the law enforcement center and the purchase of the property and, and the, the uh, solid waste function that goes on in the highway department and then the mm -hmm. issues with the, with the uh, uh, detox center and, and the juvenile center that's been going on and the time that it takes for us to try to stay on top of all that. I won't even go into all that. <laughs> but uh, it's just such a critical time right now that uh, I, I don't know how well, we would get our jobs done without. Well, I think in addition to that, I mean, you named out quite a few things that uh, she does, but uh, the one thing that you didn't mention, she really helps us out. Absolutely. I mean, she's really our assistant, you know. Well, all of those are your projects, yeah. Yeah, that's those are our projects, and about. we yeah. really need help on that and, yeah. and help with our in our travel, whatever the case may be. Everything. You know? I mean, yeah. she's probably, I know she's valuable to you, but she's very valuable to us. Too. I'll move to re replace irreplaceable Vicki. So <laughs> Second. And she should reflect that in her minutes, too. Today, so. Second. So, okay. Um, along with that, I don't know, do we, bef before we vote on that, do we want to establish how, we, how we're going to go out replacing our yeah. advertising or whatever? Uh, um, or we can vote on this in that discussion, I guess. So we'll yeah. vote on replacement okay. here. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Well, and, and, and you folks just brought up an important topic. We have been talking about um, how do we go about this. And uh, uh, frankly, uh, we do have some options within the county. I mean, we can advertise internally, and we would really like someone with some institutional knowledge that could walk into this. And we probably have some. Uh, applicants or some people that would be interested. So uh, we really haven't, uh, I mean, we've talked about that, but we certainly want your input. And I'll even go one step further and say that, you know, um, I would really appreciate help from this board to select that person because um, that position does an awful lot of one-on-one -on -one with you folks too. You just named it. I mean, you can call it any time and they'll do whatever you want to do in regards to that. So. I guess I would look to you, Mr. Chair. I, I would to, think um, that we should be involved in that. I guess that's what I'm leading up to. I okay. think we should be involved in this, you know, and Grant and I are on the Personnel Issues Committee, and it, I don't know, I, I wouldn't make a recommendation that Grant and I be on that board uh, to uh, 
replace this, you know, find a replacement. Uh, I can second that recommendation. That'd be great. Okay. That'd and you great. can add whatever um, yourself and I don't know how many more we need on there, but uh, uh, I think we'd value uh, Vicky's input into this. Absolutely. Yeah. We talked about some of the different exercises, especially for hiring from outside, but if, if with you two on that and that's where we're going to go forward, maybe we will even talk about the process first to see how far we stretch out and, and uh, if you want to do an internal advertisement first, we can do that. That's within the policy of seven days before we stretch out, but we can have that conversation to see what you folks want to what your input and uh, what you want to do on that. So I don't know if we need an emotion on I know if Jenny made it. No. Uh, I That's think it's just a matter of appointing it. Very good. Yeah, we have the PIC committee formulated with you two commissioners on that. We can just make okay. that a function. Very good. We'll move forward from that. And, uh, okay. okay. And I, I did have some information which you also receive usually on, on candidates that uh, uh, it just shows kind of the payout and the and the voted on. If we hire a certain step and things where we are at in the budget process, we're hoping to, and uh, we've already, uh, Darren uh, kind of drew up a, a schedule for getting things done on it. Uh, we will hope to have a little bit of overlap in regards to the position. Vicki was nice enough to give us a 60-day uh, notice. Uh, I think for a position that's probably 30 days or maybe even down as well as two weeks. And um, we're just really pleased that she's gracious enough to give us this amount of time so that we could uh, secure a position and, and uh, get acclimated. I won't say uh, learn the functions that they need to do, but uh, acclimated to the position anyway. So as you can see, uh, what uh, Darren's printout here shows, if everything is according to, works according to the way it's laid out, uh, we'll be pretty much even, maybe a thousand dollars difference. And, but um, we also know that the position may or may not start out at step one either, but that'll have to be determined later on by who is selected and things. So um, with that, if there, oh, go ahead, is there something else? Or just a heavy sigh? Did I? I thought. No, nope, I don't have anything. Thank you. Thanks. With that, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And with that, Vicki, the best of luck. I mean, uh, hope you enjoy your retirement as much as I am. So it's just uh, it's a great time in your career to start a new career. Okay, Nancy, uh, proof the uh, Clay County tax forfeit sale. Good morning. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning. We are working on asking you guys to approve our tax forfeit sale for the one parcel of property that we had issues with prior. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Early's property in Baker because of the, we could not find the sheriff's um, uh, service, so we've redone all the process. It's ready to go. I just need you guys to approve the resolution and make the resolution and the tax forfeit sale, and we will get it done. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Any further discussion? And this goes back. This is the guy who bought it, and it wasn't correct. Uh, so he right. just he can just be. Yes, and I believe that's the intent. Okay. How we're going. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Thanks. Thanks. Go ahead, Thank you. So, Jim. And Eric, you walked in just in time. I have a family health care. I'm going to Okay. I know Dave is gone for a funeral today, I think, isn't he? Or? Yep, yep, oh. Dave's gone today, so I'll just be me and Kirk. There Kirk he is, is here. Man. <laughs> Sorry, I got this. It was a long hit, the train, <laughs> train <laughs> delay. No, it's a long, long ways away, and I'm coming out of shape. I had to stop and get a breath. Okay, we got the, <laughs> first of all, we'll talk about the highway building uh, and the landfill building construction. Is that what we're taking up first? Yep. Okay. So, let's see here. So as you guys remember, we opened up the bids for the shop last week. And since then, we've kind of, in the past week, we've reviewed all the bids, uh, highway and landfill together. 
And we've picked through them, and we've actually met with a lot of the contractors. We're just trying to understand what's included in each bid. And more or less, we're looking for the best value and what's going to serve our needs for the future. And uh, we came forward with a recommendation of uh, awarding the project to Foltz Buildings. Uh, they were the low bid in the amount of $1,179,000. So I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Kurt. No, I think uh, we did uh, view a couple of different buildings. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Uh, we did uh, view a couple of buildings, and uh, we looked at uh, both uh, from both uh, uh, the constructing uh, contractors, rather. And it just seemed to us that the uh, the best value uh, was uh, to go with the uh, Fultz building. Uh, it seemed like uh, it was uh, uh, obviously a lower bid. Uh, but it also gave us good value as well, so uh, I felt pretty positive about that. Mr. Oh, Chair? Yeah. Uh, Kevin, has that been through committee? No, it's, we, we met. Yeah, them. no, not, not the, not the. No, we opened bids last week. Open bids? And yeah. Okay. The, the, to send it to bids was brought to committee, but. Okay. Uh, so it's gone through the process. It, Foltz built our shop in Barnesville, didn't they? And that's yes. been a good building, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we've had good luck with that, so we, we feel confident that we're going to Well, I think it's good news that the low bidder is looking to be the best tool to go with. So, um, well, I, Mr. Chairman, I, I felt the same way. I mean, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's going to be a really, really nice building. I think it's going to serve both, uh, both departments' functions very, very well. So I'm very pleased that it came in at the uh, bids that it did. And again, the, the low bidder, uh, it, it, it works well for us. The portions, um, the portions, I had a, an opportunity to talk to Dave just briefly on the phone the other night, but uh, um, actually wasn't even through talking to him, but it was back and forth on the phone messages. But the, um, the, um, the amount, there's still other dollars that, that need to be added to this, yep. and are we still gonna stay within that 1.4? Yeah, and that, yeah, that's good to bring up. There's some, cause there's some others, uh, like the uh, sprinkler. Yep. So we kind of pieced a few things out. Um, the site work, which we approved recently, and that's actually that work's completed. Mm -hmm. um, then also the ten, or since we bid the project, we found out that we'll need uh, sprinklers to meet the build, our fire code, um, and water, sewer, electric, all these things. Now, when you add them to the low bid here, we should come in right at our $1.4 million estimate. So we should be right on track, uh, unless we find any other unexpected changes. But Does adding the sprinkler system require you to have any additional wells? Uh, it will, we'll actually have to design like a pressure tank and pump and stuff. So we're in the process of moving forward with that. Do you have a well out there already? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, yes, we do, but uh, for this new uh, facility, we're going to have to have a new well and, and new septic system as well. Do you anticipate any issues with that? Uh, Mr. Really? Chairman, uh, Commissioner, no. I think that uh, it's really uh, that's a really good site. I mean, that's one of the things also that the uh, the contractor talked about with this uh, um, building. Actually, um, uh, he talked about that this would be a perfect site for this uh, building because it's it's so sandy out there. One of the things, uh, just so you all are aware of this, um, during the, uh, the, uh, the, the siting or the, the pad uh, preparation, um, had to take out an awful lot of boulders. I mean, it's really sandy out there, but there are a lot of boulders that they had to take out as well. So um, there was some additional expense that um, uh, we incurred in the, uh, the uh, site preparation, but it was still within budget, so. Thank you. How, how are we doing the methane gas? Uh, yeah. uh, where, where are we at? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, Commissioners, we uh, we uh, hired uh, Burns McDonald to uh, to do a do a study um, for us to um, give us an idea of what the O&M uh, costs were and also the capital cost. Um, they're going to be coming to the Solid Waste Advisory Committee uh, this Thursday to give kind of a preliminary report. Uh, we hope to have a complete report done here within the next two or three weeks. Okay. And to add to those additional expenses, I guess we did get reach out and get quotes for the sewer and well. And uh, the low bid on each of those, uh, the sewer was Larry's excavating the amount of $6,345. And then the well was uh, LTP Enterprise. 
uh, with $8,341. Okay. So that's the well and those pressure tanks that you were talking about? Uh, that's just the well, so the pressure tanks for the sprinkler system would be part of that sprinkler um, system. Yeah, I think just keep her on target. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Guess we need a move. We need a move. I, I, I would move we accept the low bid from Second. Fultz. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, I think you're done with me, Mr. Chairman. Pardon? I think you're done with me, aren't you? <laughs> I'll see a little bit. Okay, sounds good. Uh, probably should discuss the solid waste. Is that we had some discussion? Is there going to be people that do we need to be represented of the solid waste? Uh, uh, yeah, I. Um, I mean, I, I got a copy saying that we got a meeting and you two have a conflict. Or yeah, I I cannot make Thursday morning's meeting and neither can Grant. So uh, I suppose we could probably. Arranged to have a it's Thursday morning at eight. Mr. Chairman, essentially, uh, what the uh, the agenda is, is or the meeting is going to be about is, as I mentioned, uh, uh, we're going to have a preliminary uh, uh, report from uh, Burns and McDonald. Um, I expect that to be fairly interesting, and then also kind of a uh, report uh, on the cleanup week uh, that we just completed, which will boggle your mind, as it did mine. I'll, I'll I'll come to the meeting and because uh, okay. I am interested in this Burns McDonald report, so uh, I'm on highway tracking, so I, I'll I'll represent the, the board in this. Uh, okay. Unless someone else wants to sit down. Did uh, Mr. Chairman? I, I don't know, Kevin. Did you tell him that uh, you guys bring the donuts? Then did uh, uh. <laughs> only if you're the. Only if you're an alternate show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Very good. And then I guess the last item for me is <clears throat> the uh, Lake County Safe Roads Coalition. Um, we've been participating with them the past few years, and I guess those of you who aren't familiar with it, um, they do a lot of outreach activities um, just to make our roads safer, you know, trying to reduce impaired and distracted driving. And uh, we're coming to the end of our uh, second year with the existing grant and they're getting ready to put together another grant application to fund the program and they are looking for a MOU from the highway department to show our support so we have that together Mr. Chair I'll move to approve the MOU second any further discussion all in favor Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thanks. Mr. Chair, just so that uh, we're clear on it, the motion for approval of the joint um, facility also included approval of the well quote and the uh, septic quote as well, too, then, correct? Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay, with that we go into approval of the engaged uh, construction engineers for the law enforcement center schematics work at an hourly rate. Well, good morning again, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Uh, if you recall, <coughs> you went through an extensive search for a uh, construction management firm and um, that was for the correctional facility. And what the construction firm has been doing is working with the architects for cost analysis and different things for, or starting to, I should say, with the uh, law enforcement center as well. And uh, without having to go through a formal presentation for a contract and things like that, they are in agreement just to work on an hourly rate on the law enforcement center, and that's what your architect is doing as well. So you, uh, they supplied us with an hourly rate sheet for the correctional facility, and they are in agreement to just go along with that and charge on an hourly rate for the minimum work that they will do for the law enforcement center during the schematic phase. Uh, we will certainly make, have to come to you with a recommendation of uh, what we do for a construction manager firm 
uh, later on, but at this early stage, uh, we felt we needed approval for them to uh, do some work on the law enforcement center. Okay, and I see this is shared with the city of Moorhead. Right? Yes, and this is shared 50-50 with the city of Moorhead. Same with the architectural fees that are going on as well with that schematic study. Okay. Any question on this? And will we move forward with the um, uh, hourly contract rate with construction? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, before Brian, um, one last thing on when it comes to this um, whole jail process. Um, our time is uh, running low on time, time frames for certain things. And uh, uh, we've seen now what the uh, Minnesota le legislature did not do for our, uh, for our jail funding request. Um, and as our auditor has indicated to us, we have a, a limited timeline for when we would have to put out a referendum question. Right. So I think, um, I think this is our last meeting in May. So we need to, um, I don't want to wait to the very last, um, last meeting that, under the deadline to approve language that would go for a referendum. So I would hope that um, we can have something before this board for our first meeting in June to at least start that discussion phase in case there's commissioners who want additional information or whatever so that we can um, finally approve a, the referendum question if so it be the board's wishes, which I hope they will be. Um, but anyway, I, d I just want to know if you can make sure that we're, we okay. follow that timeline. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair and Commissioner Campbell, we will make sure we follow that, that timeline. In fact, uh, I was going to review it in reports, but uh, Lori and I did meet with uh, Maury Lanning yesterday afternoon, and we just kind of talked through the time limits and the process and where we have to go with this. And, and uh, we have, uh, or Lori has, uh, oh, established the wordage for the ballot. And uh, we set kind of a, a timeline for us of July 1st to try to get that wordage to you for approval. And she said right now that um, it would be, uh, she's okay later into July, but I think July 1st is still the timeline we should go with. And we will get that wordage to the board for approval on it. And frankly, that's kind of the next step that has to happen. The resolution, then you'll be asked to pass a resolution, but that will really come later on uh, after the referendum uh, has taken place. So. Um, but we have, to, we have to actually have a resolution to advance the referendum, don't we? The advance the referendum, yes, after the vote to the state legislature. We well, but, but, but how, how does, what, gi what gives Lori the authority to put it on the ballot? There has to be a vote of this body to do that. That's correct. That would be the ballot question that we'll bring to you okay. very soon. Yes. Okay. In July. In, prior to July. Yeah, I, I would feel, what you're talking about. if you actually, if Lori has that language already, I would, I would feel more comfortable sooner rather than later. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll get it right, right away. Because that's going to have a, it's a yeah. critical funding mechanism we don't want to. Absolutely, and that's what we talked about. We thought the resolution had to come in right away as well, along with the ballot question. Okay. And after the discussion yesterday, it sounds like the, uh, the timing for the resolution is after the, the ballot question. Uh, is considered and then before it goes to the legislature. We're also going to send this information that we discussed yesterday to uh, the state legislature for their review, not their approval at this point in time, but just to make sure everything is in place. Okay. So. Thank you. <clears throat> With that, we'll go on to FM Diversion Joint Powers Agreement with Mr. Shockley. Uh, who is the attorney for the Flood Division Authority? Morning. Good morning. How are you all this morning? Hope you're doing well. So far, we're doing okay. <laughs> uh, I uh, recently distributed, uh, maybe back up a little bit, the, the history of this is we, 
the limited joint powers agreement that's currently in place uh, by, its, by its very terms expires uh, prior to the signing of the PPA, which is the project partnership agreement. The project partnership agreement has been drafted with the Corps of Engineers. Uh, in an effort to amend that agreement, uh, we put forth a, uh, the joint powers agreement, uh, keeping in mind that it's a very public process and trying to get everybody's input into the agreement. Uh, and there's been several versions circulated uh, regarding the joint powers agreement. Uh, you have the near final joint powers agreement in front of you. Uh, the Cass County Commission approved the uh, near final version of the joint powers agreement with the understanding that they may need to execute some additional changes if the Buffalo Red River Watershed District did not approve the Joint Powers Agreement. Uh, last night, the Buffalo Red River Watershed District did not approve the agreement, so we would have some very minor technical changes to the agreement that they would no longer be a member entity. And from a technical legal perspective, it is no longer an amendment to the limited joint powers agreement, it's just simply a new joint powers agreement. Because the limited joint powers agreement, by its very nature, provided that it would expire unless all the parties agreed to amend it. So since not all of the parties are agreeing to go forward with the project, we now have a new joint powers agreement. Substantively, from a governance standpoint, all of the important issues that we've worked out resolved those don't change at all. It's just a technical revision to how we treat it, whether it's an amendment or a new agreement. And so recognizing that issue, uh, when I talked with the Cass County Commission, they just approved it in, its sub uh, in substantively the same form as was presented to them with any appropriate changes that would be needed for the Buffalo Red Watershed District uh, with the understanding that <coughs> if that contingency were to happen, we'd make the changes, bring it back to them, just make sure that they're still okay with it. But, uh, and uh, I'll just go over, before I start asking questions, what changes would be needed based upon, now that we know that contingency would happen, uh, Buffalo Red Watershed District would be identified in the agreement as a former non, uh, or former member entity uh, their voting position on the board, uh, keep in mind that before under the limited joint powers agreement, they did not have a position on the board. That would be redistributed to either Clay County or Moorhead. And I, I'm thinking just substantively, you may want to just have the extra position go to Moorhead, where Moorhead would have three, Clay County would have two persons on the Diversion Authority Board. The land uh, that would be that was contemplated in Minnesota to be uh, owned by Buffalo Red, uh, we would have an option. We would just keep maximum flexibility in the agreement. It would either be owned by Moorhead, Clay County, or a combination of both, or the Diversion Authority, just to give us maximum flexibility because we aren't contemplating starting land acquisition in Minnesota for at least a couple more years, and so. Maximum flexibility, uh, Moorhead and Clay County may want to enter into some type of joint powers agreement just between the two entities regarding land acquisition. That's something we can deal with later on. Those would be the changes to the joint powers agreement along with one technical revision to the uh, making it into an assignment provision rather than a continuation provision uh, under the joint powers agreement where the limited joint powers entity would be assigning all of its interest to the new joint powers entity. So very technical change, but what I would propose is I can answer any substantive questions. Uh, we'll be looking for uh, your approval today of the substantive terms of the joint powers agreement uh, so that then with uh, authorization to make whatever changes are necessary to take Buffalo Red Watershed District out of the agreement I would propose that at your next meeting, I would bring back that agreement just so that you're comfortable with it. Uh, I wanna make sure that everybody's comfortable with those changes, but they would be pretty limited. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chair, my, my question is why wouldn't we just push this until that next meeting so that you can have more concrete? I understand that we wanna have the maximum flexibility, but in a joint powers agreement, I don't feel comfortable making an approval on something that, that's quite fluid at this point still? Well, a couple, uh, from a practical standpoint, uh, 
I need to know if the bodies are in agreement with the substantive terms of the agreement, uh, the joint power of the agreement. Last night, Buffalo Red weighed in and said, no, we're not. So from a pure drafting standpoint, if you're not interested in participating in the agreement, tell me now and just say we're not interested in participating in it. I'll make <coughs> those changes. Uh, also, from a practical standpoint, the agreement had already contemplated that one of the parties may not agree to it. That was specifically addressed in Article 1. And so it's just a matter of making a few technical changes that don't affect the substance of the agreement. And really, the only, uh, the only substantive issue is redistributing that one member position. Uh, and this version of the agreement actually contemplated flexibility in the ownership of land in Minnesota. Uh, it specifically provided that Buffalo Red or uh, a Minnesota uh, Moorhead or Clay County or the Diversion Authority could own land in Minnesota. So it's just a cleanup provision clarifying that. So from a, a substantive standpoint, there would be no substantive changes other than making that technical revision. But I want to make sure that, number one, you're okay substantively with the agreement with the understanding I come back just for the blessing on those technical changes. I do have one other question. Um, the, in terms of maintenance costs, before there was a large amount that was shouldered by the, the Buffalo Red, and so how, who has the authority then to collect those those costs for maintenance? Would it defer to Clay County? Would it defer to Moorhead? Well, well first of all, uh, I'll address the, the maintenance costs, and then I'll get to your question. The, uh, with, uh, um, Mr. Zimmerman suggested, uh, and we have secured in the agreement, that the maintenance costs would be split in the same proportion uh, as the cost-benefit ratio set forth in the DNR report. So it's a much smaller maintenance cost than it was in the original uh, drafts that you'd seen. Originally, we had been uh, taking care of all the infrastructure that was in Minnesota. Now it's just a percentage of the cost, so that has been greatly reduced. Uh, in the agreement, it contemplates that the cost of maintenance would come from two sources, either Buffalo Red Watershed District or the city of Moorhead stormwater maintenance fee. Uh, that is a relatively small amount now for maintenance, uh, and so I won't envision there would be any changes that would shift the cost to Clay County. So from a financial perspective, the changes that happened last night wouldn't incur any more onto Clay County than what was already stated? Not to Clay County, no. So then eminent domain, would who would have that power then? Because the Buffalo Red had that before. Yeah, there, the city of Moorhead has the eminent domain authority. I think that there may be a comfort, a greater comfort level uh, given that some of the residents will be uh, your constituents outside the city of Moorhead. I think one of the desires of the mayor had been to have Buffalo Red at the table uh, to represent the interest of its constituents. Having declined that, uh, I think that the strategically it may make sense for the city uh, of Moorhead and Clay County to enter into a joint powers agreement so that there's representation regarding those deci decisions regarding land acquisitions. So while the city could do the technical eminent domain portion, I think that they'd want direct input from this board because it's a lot of your constituents. And uh, to be frank, I think it would be helpful to know what, you know, our city council members don't necessarily have a lot of uh, interplay with those people. Uh, and they would feel more comfortable if they had somebody, your input regarding how to uh, deal with those issues. So that, that's what I would propose is that we would do a joint powers agreement between the city of Moorhead and Clay County to address that. The answer to her question though, really either entity has the right, uh, but I, what you're saying is that, and I agree with who it's, uh, it would probably be uh, the undertaking more of the city of Moorhead, they have the authority, but uh, I, you know, I think this talk of a possible joint powers between Moorhead and, and Clay County on, on that is probably a, something worthwhile. That would be outside of this agreement Correct. anyway. Yeah, Correct. But it would have to deal with land acquisition. Correct. Yeah. And the agreement, the joint powers agreement contemplates that the member entities can enter into sub joint powers agreement. And that may make sense from both entities' perspective to do the sub joint powers agreement. So, because they each have 
you know, you have certain skills that you can bring to the table, we have certain engineering skills that we can bring to the table. So I, I think it would be a good cooperative effort. It, it's of course up to the governing boards, but I think that that would be a way to deal with the, the contingency now that has uh, matured into an actual fact, and that's Buffalo Red River Watershed District's uh, non-participation in the project. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I, um, you know, we we went through this uh, with Mr. Shockley here a few weeks ago, and kind of went over the more of the internal details of, of the project, and and um, and I I do want to say, and I do want to uh, compliment um, Ward City Council members um, Mike Hewlett and Mary Daly, who uh, represented. Um, uh, the Minnesota side uh, in the negotiation of this new document and it um, you know it clearly um, protects the financial interests of both the city and the county that we've always been concerned about with this deal that that uh, if this if there was to be funding from from Minnesota it, it really needs to come from the state of Minnesota and I think that is very clearly uh, stated in here uh, that uh, we we are financially protected, and if any board members have questions of of our own county attorney on that, I'm sure she will concur with uh, with what I just with what I just said. Um, I I do um, I, I I'm I am going to say I'm disappointed in uh, our Buffalo Red River Watershed District for not wanting to be at this table, but that's their choice, and this document. Um, was crafted with the idea in mind that there may be an entity who does not want to be involved. And I think uh, it clearly states what the alternative is. And John, do you need to know today, uh, for the purpose of finalizing this, uh, where that member would go? Would you like to have know that today? Because I firmly believe that, uh, um, you know, the from the Minnesota side, the, the the big member in the room is the city of Moorhead, and I think if there's to be three and two, I do think it should be Moorhead should have three in Clay County too, uh, and I I certainly wouldn't have any objection to that member going to the city of Moorhead. It, it would be helpful uh, in discussions with the two council members. I had contemplated this contingency that Buffalo Red may not approve it, uh, given uh, just looking at all potential contingencies and, and I think that they would be open to accepting that position. It would be very helpful uh, if I knew that's what your board's desire was then we could simply put it in and I, I'm almost, uh, I have almost completed the minor changes to the agreement that would be needed uh, with the intent of getting that uh, out within the next 48 hours for the attorney, your attorney to review. I, I, I do agree with uh, Commissioner Mojo's uh, comments about, you know, should we be doing this next week or not? But I, I also understand your concern about the need for the substantive part, and I, I really think that we could do that today to, to vote on the substance of this new document. Uh, but then we'd almost have to come back with a final, final version basically is what we would be doing. Yeah, and I will be doing the same with uh, the Cass County Commission. Uh, I will be bringing back the final, final, because it was always, there's always the potential that one of the parties may not approve the agreement. Uh, and so I will be going back to them with the final, final. I would, I would, with getting the agreement out, uh, the revisions to the agreement out within the next 48 hours, uh, I would expect that the Cass Joint uh, Water Resource District will approve Thursday morning, so they won't need to go back to them, uh, and Fargo would then be the next approving entity. So tell me again the changes that you, you started off telling what the changes would require here. Okay, sure. Yeah, the changes uh, with uh, Buffalo Red Watershed Districts uh, determination not to participate in the agreement, mm -hmm. a couple things would need to happen. Mm -hmm. First, uh, they are no longer a member entity, uh, so that's really ah. striking them in the agreement as a member entity. They would then become a former non-member entity, which is already defined in the agreement. Uh, then we would, uh, from a 
technical legal standpoint, the agreement moves from being an amendment to the limited joint powers agreement to just a new agreement. So it'll be a new agreement between the five member entities. Uh, recall the limited joint powers agreement by its very nature is set to terminate without any action of any of the parties prior to the signing of the PPA. So uh, if, if we did nothing, uh, that agreement would simply terminate. So we would change this, it would become a new agreement uh, and one of the sections, uh, instead of simply being an amendment, would now be an assignment of any of the prior obligations from the limited joint powers entity to the new, new entity. Uh, it's just a very simple legal technical change. Uh, the other portion uh, that relates to governance that would uh, change is the agreement contemplated that one of, one of the parties may not approve the agreement. Their positions would be redistributed to the members on the same side of the river. So in the event, uh, now that we have Buffalo Red not approving it, their one member position would either be distributed to the city of Moorhead or Clay County. Uh, and then in the final section that addresses them uh, would be the land acquisition section, which they had originally contemplated that they would own most of the infrastructure in Minnesota. Uh, based upon the first time I met with them, we also added a provision in where they could transfer ownership to the other Minnesota member entities or to the diversion authority if they so desired. Uh, now it's simply cleaning that section up that the ownership of the property would either go to the city of Moorhead, Clay County, a joint powers entity created by Clay County and Moorhead or the diversion authority, just to put maximum flexibility in that. And we could later resolve that by agreement between the county and the city. Because once again, the land acquisition won't take place between the on the Minnesota side for a while. Okay, okay. And, and as long as I have you, I, I just want to make clear because financial issues are always important to everybody. On the Minnesota side, uh, as you, uh, Commissioner Campbell has clearly stated, the Minnesota local entities are not directly responsible for capital costs associated with the project. So you're not required to issue bonds, you're not required to create improvement districts, and you're not required to impose a sales tax for the uh, project. Rather, all funding for capital costs on the Minnesota side would come from the Minnesota legislature, and that is in conformance with the final cost allocation, uh, which uh, may be made by DNR in its report, because Minnesota legislature would likely rely upon that. There is an upper cap on the amount that the Minnesota legislature would be requested to contribute. That's $100 million. Under the current uh, cost of the project, and the allocation set forth by the Minnesota DNR, that number is approximately 43 million. The agreement specifically sets forth that the diversion authority is taking the risk of non-appropriation. So if the Minnesota legislature fails to appropriate that 43 million, that risk is completely borne by the diversion authority. So the Minnesota member entity's responsibility is to use good faith efforts to request that the Minnesota legislature provide funding for the project. There is a cost section, a separate cost section dealing with maintenance costs. Uh, the maintenance costs would be split in the same proportion and percentage as set forth in the DNR report, uh, and that would be paid for out of stormwater fees, which uh, the amount of maintenance per year uh, for the Minnesota side had been previously discussed at a Minnesota or a Moorhead City Council meeting. What was that? Uh, it'll be about $60,000 a year for the Minnesota share. And I don't know if Bob is here tonight or today, but uh, he was the one that uh, put that number forward and was discussing it with the city council. So I'll make a motion to approve the joint powers agreement and to add that additional person to the city of Moorhead to serve on the joint powers board. Um. <coughs> I'll second it, but I'm probably going to ask to amend it mm -hmm. here. But just to, uh, the when you said they um, we would be a, we would now be approving a new JPA, but we would be assigning there'd be an assignment of the limited JPA to the new JPA. Mm -hmm. Is that 
good enough language just the way I stated it there? Or? Actually, Clay County doesn't have to do the assignment at all. It, okay. would, it would be from, there will be an extra signature page on the agreement uh, that is from the di current diversion authority just saying we assign all obligations. Okay, so, so that doesn't even have to yep. be a part it of that. Doesn't, from a member entity perspective, it doesn't matter. It, these are really just technical technical changes, and I would certainly defer to your attorney, okay. but it, it just purely technical changes uh, to update the agreement to reflect uh, Buffalo Red Rivers. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, I, I think, you know, I think I would like to see our motion indicate that um, that the um, Buffalo Red has declined uh, to be a member. And I, I do think that I would like to have um, grant part of the, uh, I would like to amend the motion to uh, to address the reason for the new JPA is because of the um, uh, declining by the, the Buffalo uh, Red to be part of the JPA. And then I also would like to have the amended motion to include uh, lang substitute language in the agreement that would state that land acquisition would be owned by Moorhead. L land, uh, land acquisitions in Minnesota would be owned by the city of Moorhead, Clay County, or a, a joint powers created by Moorhead, Clay County, or the Diversion Authority. Is it not already in no, there? it's not in there. Well, how about how about this? How about a um, motion to approve the joint powers agreement in its substantive form uh, with any technical revisions that are deemed appropriate by your attorney and the chair, uh, and I'll bring back those technical changes. Okay, and, but that, and this would be a technical change? Yes, those okay. would All be right. technical changes. All right, well, that, that sounds simpler. All right, yeah. we'll do it that way. <laughs> but I do, that's that, fine. but that's got, got to be in there someplace. So. All right, that's... Okay, we've got a motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Passes. Thank you. And I'll be Thanks. back in two weeks with the uh, technical changes and just go over those. So I want to make sure that you have some comfort level that those technical changes have actually been made, and I'll share them with the county attorney also. Thank you. Kathy. Active Places Agreement, Public Health. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have Austin with me as well. And thank you very much for uh, taking this last minute request. We actually just received the corrected agreement this morning. It actually had the Community Health Board as the, uh, as the consultant. And is, this agreement is just with Clay County Public Health. So I'll give you the uh, corrected agreement if you so approve. And I need a signature for that. So this is funding that we are receiving through uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's a small amount. It's a $6,000 um, contribution to support the project. And I'll allow Austin to talk just briefly about that um, project. Sure. So just to give a brief description of it, um, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield has, this is from through the Center for Prevention, of course, um, put out an RFP for something called Active Places Demonstration Projects. Um, basically, um, it's an effort to, to try to put money in places for projects that help encourage physical activity. Um, they want to basically use that money or have people use that money to make temporary changes, either temporary um, small infrastructure changes or providing a destination that would be accessible by walking or biking or, or other things that would increase physical activity. Um, so what we um, proposed is to kind of add an addition onto Streets Alive of course, already very successful Fargo Moorhead event on the Moorhead side um, on Center Avenue. So during Streets Alive, during all three events, um, the plan is to do a uh, pop-up bike lane similar to what's been done in Fargo in the past, and then also a uh, kind of working on that little plaza by U.S. Bank there that's owned by the city. Um, things like adding bike parking, adding some seating. We have an existing partnership with uh, an organization called Springboard for the Arts out of Fergus Falls and St. Paul. Um, we'd like to do some arts programming and health and arts together focused programming in that area as well. Um, so basically this is money just basically for supplies to um, carry out both of those projects. Yeah. Yes, to uh, approve 
entering into the agreement okay. and then a signature. Second the motion. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Austin? Kathy. Kathy. Okay, with that, we're going to the button. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Well, Mr. Chair, if we could, um, I've just been uh, asked uh, by Rhonda to add an additional agenda item, if possible. Uh, she said she just had a resignation from one of her child protection workers, and since you don't meet next, the board does not meet next week, she is wondering if we could, um, if you could add to your agenda today consideration of uh, her presentation for a replacement of a child protection worker. I'll make a motion to approve an agenda addition. Second. Okay, Rhonda. Oh, excuse me. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Sorry about that for Melanie. Thank you so much, and I apologize for the short notice. I just got a resignation this morning, and I was looking at the calendar and realizing that you do not meet next Tuesday and would love to move forward as quickly as we can. The uh, employee uh, gave a two-week notice, so she will officially be done June 7th, or at least that would be her last day in the office. She is a child protection worker. She works in our ongoing unit, uh, has been with us. Uh, again, I didn't grab the detail, but probably about 18 years, so um, she's uh, certainly gonna be a loss for us. She is going to uh, go to the Red River Children's Advocacy Center, which is an organization we work very closely with, so we're fortunate to keep her in our community and working with our child protection families. Um, we are in, in the interviewing process for some of our other child protection positions, so was anxious to be able to consider this position among that mix, so looking for your approval to replace her position. I'll make a motion to approve the replacement. I'll second that bill. Yes, I would request that, yeah. The motion will reflect that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you so much for the Next thing we're going to budget discussion timetable for budget for 2017. Mr. Burr. <clears throat> well, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you for adding this to the agenda today. We had prepared this document probably a month ago, and um, in the, I don't want to say flurry, but in the distraction this week, it was not put on the agenda after. Vicki told me she was going to be retiring, so I, that's the only logical explanation I can come up with for it not being on the agenda. She because could throw her under the bus now. Uh, yeah, I know. I don't, I'm not blaming, blaming her necessarily. It's my fault. But we did have it prepared some time ago, and uh, just, uh, phew, <laughs> it went over my head, and it's a very important step. But what we have done in the past is, is uh, met today for basically for you to approve the uh, schedule here of us pushing forward with the, with the budget, but also to listen to your comments if you have some general comments in regards to it. We have little information so far uh, because this is just kind of the collection process of what our, our county program aid is going to be, what our insurance costs are going to be, uh, what cost of living, we've got some ideas on that. Uh, but there's just so many things that we don't know at this point. But it's a, it's a time for for our board to to um, ask any questions or set some parameters if if you so desire to do that, and us to listen and then try to live within those parameters. Okay, Kevin, Mr. Chairman, I I know uh, <laughs> the way we normally start this budget process is that there's a letter that goes out to department heads by our county administrator. Uh, asking to uh, submit uh, information by a certain time frame. And I know 
Uh, in the past, there's been some years where we've allowed leniency in terms of allowing department heads to bring things forward, whatever they thought they may need or, or want. Uh, I think that, uh, but there's also been years where we've, we've uh, give, given the direction to our administrator to make sure that we let them know of the significant issues that are coming before us and why we need to keep things, uh, you know, we need to really watch new requests, for example, and, and I would think that 2017 will be one. One of those years. Well, I mean, when you, when you look at, um, what we've done with some union contracts and uh, with, um, uh, with the insurance and then the, um, those cost of living increases are gonna, are gonna be up there. Um, I, I, would, I would think that we'd wanna uh, send a message to them to really scrutinize the, their own budgets before they even bring them here uh, to make it a little bit easier for us. I think anything that would come before us that would have a, 12 or 13 percent increase would be uh, just unacceptable. So we might as well say, at least in my mind, would be unacceptable. And I, so I think we need to state that now. And so we, you know, it isn't a, such a bad idea to give them, uh, you know, uh, some sort of a target. We we have target dates for things, and we should also be talking about uh, target numbers uh, that we'd like to s s st see our budget stay within. Uh, we, we don't know the certainty of, uh, of a referendum, uh, but we know the certainty of needing to, to build. Um, you know, and so, there, so that issue is going to be hanging over our head till the referendum is actually done in November. But, um, but I just think the, the initial instructions are, can be key to how they department heads deal with it. I also do want to say that I appreciate the flexibility with all of our department heads. I know they, they are uh, um, very um, good at analyzing and saving where they can and, and making, making what they can work. But I, I am in agreement with Kevin. I'm very concerned as to what uh, 2017 will mean for our budget. We've had some enormous new requests that were very well needed. Uh, but it may be a year of self-reflection within departments to see where there may be some excess that can be trimmed, not job-wise, but just um, just certain needs-wise, what maybe if we could push off a new purchase a year or, or things like that. But because we are entering into an enormous build project, I think that I would appreciate uh, that sort of um, thought process with the department heads. Well, I, you know, it even goes, you know, when it, when it, when it boils down to it, there's, um, and that's kind of why we even have these multi-entity meetings because, you know, there's not only uh, Clay County's needs, but there's school district needs and there's city needs and all those go to the same people. And so we need to, you know, I, I know that Commissioner Mojo's talked about uh, maybe the Barnesville area probably looking at a school referendum. And so, uh, and uh, DGF is looking at another one. And all of these things also have implications to the people that we all share equally, and that's the constituents' checkbook. And so I think we need to do what we can. This 2017 is gonna be a, a tough year for us on our budget. Okay. Okay, very, uh, very good. I, uh, we have been, as I've have reported to the commission before, we have been talking about this with the, with the managers that uh, it's going to be challenging and uh, we'll, uh, we'll probably stay tuned very closely. We'll schedule all of the departments, the significant budgets in, in front of you again. And, uh, but we will, uh, we'll send out that strong signal that, that we need to keep a cap on things. So. But just, in, in, and what we've been talking with the different folks, different groups, even on our building projects is unfortunately or fortunately, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know which view is best. Clay County is uh, outside of, of the Rochester area is the fastest growing county in outstate Minnesota. 
and along with growth comes additional expenses and concerns and costs and just seeing what, what's happening. So we'll have to decide, and that's going to be some tough to choices for you folks, deciding on the core that you want to support because it's that core service of, of government. That, but it uh, is a delicate balance, as you say, because if we do too much, we will quickly become the metro that is not growing. That's right. And that's so we are, you know, it's a... It's a delicate line to which it is a fantastic place. It is growing, and there are issues that we need to address. But if you overtax an area, it will not become an area that's growing. Yeah, that's exactly right. So you right. got your work cut out for you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. With that, uh, before we go to committee reports, just a reminder that our next meeting will be starting at 10 a.m. on oh, June 7th. Okay. So there's a meeting prior to that at 7.30 if you want to go to that to the safety update. Have, do we, did we get everybody registered or do we have to register for that one? Oh, just a matter of then it's okay. All right. With that, committee reports. Grant. Uh, let's see. I just had the uh, agency on aging meeting with the Clay County Senior Council last week and uh, I uh, had a lot of updates from the local seniors, but uh, I discussed uh, the jail and the upcoming referendum, and uh, they were all very receptive to a uh, sales tax uh, to help pay for the jail. And, Who was that? Uh, the seniors, Clay oh. County seniors. And uh, Dale Raleigh said that uh, if we get him the information, he will see that uh, all the senior centers in the county get uh, all the information they need about the referendum and and the purpose of the additional sales tax. So Excellent. that was it okay. for me. Wayne. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> On Tuesday, May 17th, the local advisory council for adult mental health, general business, agency reports from 12 participating agencies, all are at or near full capacity. As usual, the meeting was well attended, and was a variety of issues. There was a variety of issues that were discussed. On Thursday, May 19th, Lake Agassiz Regional Library full board meeting, general business, presentation of the audit by I. Bailey, and the audit was excellent. Went over the financial report and revised the upcoming budget. Then we have the director's report, board members' reports, and all as well at Lake Agassiz Regional Library. And that is my report, Mr. Chair. Kevin? I have um, no committees last week. Okay. Jenny? Thank you. Last Tuesday, I attended the planning commission. It was a long and lengthy meeting. Uh, Commissioner Gross was also in attendance. Uh, the evening started out with a discussion in regards to changing our ordinance on animal units. That, after a long <laughs> discussion uh, will be recommended to the board for an action. Uh, we finally one, found out that a pig is not a pig. Yeah. A pig is only a quarter. One thing that is, is contingent on that that the Planning Commission had hoped is that we will work to define threshold values for animals. Um, if that threshold value wouldn't be uh, addressed, there would be an exponential doubling or tripling in values that would be allowed. And that is not necessarily, that not at all, the intent on us addressing it. It would just be to align Clay County with the same uh, values and uh, ordinances that the state requires. Did I cover that correctly, Jenny? Yes. Great. The next thing that was approved was an interim use permit uh, for a dog boarding facility on the east side of Glendon that was approved. And the second that was addressed was an interim use permit in regards to a gravel pit. There was a lot of discussion on that in regards to um, gravel roads and what roads may or may not be suitable for gravel trucks hauling on them, partially because there are uh, quite a few pits on that specific, uh, in that specific two townships. I asked that the uh, topic be tabled until the next meeting because there, within a quarter mile, what is approved 
or what would have been approved is that a woman would have a gravel road with significant gravel trucks on the west side of her property and if this would have been approved within a quarter mile she would have two gravel accesses on either side of her property i tabled it with the hope that the applicants speak can work with nearby neighbors to work out some sort of uh, agreement on a different access point um, i think that covers that meeting. I do appreciate everyone for wearing red to support fire and EMS last week. That was what the joint powers had encouraged citizens to do. And I also wanted to briefly touch on a topic that I, I did have to leave last week. My son had a track meet, but Brian did bring up a subject that I had talked to him about and I had talked to uh, Commissioner Gross about. My intention and hope for that would be that we as a board would have presentations from uh, the cities incorporated or unincorporated of Clay County to have open communication with what is coming up for them, what is in the next year, what will they be experiencing, and that will, I feel, allow us to better govern uh, based on the needs of the community. There were several great topics that came out of that. Uh, if there are members of this board that feel that having jail law enforcement presentations to them would be a good thing, that is uh, completely separate than what my main goal would be. Uh, part of what we talked about with Brian just now was how our referendums with schools going to affect how we uh, come up with our budgets. And so my main goal is to have a better open dialogue with those count our cities and allow uh, them to tell us what they are needing. Uh, sometimes I feel it may be the other way around, but. Mr. Chair, <clears throat> where would you like these meetings, this meeting? To my hope was that it would be here. Yeah, okay. I, we all have our own districts and we do a lot of uh, okay. talking with our constituents in those districts, but I feel that it would be a great opportunity to them for them to come to us during but, our meetings. Yeah, I, um, I like, um, I know the jail is very important, mm -hmm. but I think that's a separate issue that, that has been taken out. Completely, and yep. Taken that to other places. Okay. I feel like there's enough things, uh, enough opportunities for them, for them to talk to, to us. Right, but for them to hear what we're saying, it's published in the newspapers. It's it's uh, televised. I have a lot of people at Barnesville that say we observed the the commission meeting and see what you're doing. So I would hope that they would be all be able to come here, whether it be a mayor, some city council people, and just let us know what's going on. Mr. Chair, I'd like to say I like that idea, but if we have it here, I don't think the five of us should be sitting up here. I'd like to have it in another oh, you area. Would where we're all just sitting around, not. Well, I think then that would be different if we wanted to do something uh, like that. Is this what you have in mind? Well, it, it's, it's up for call. discussion. No, it's up for all of our discussion because last year we did have a joint meeting with all of our board, with all of the city of Moorhead council people, and with all of the Moorhead school board. And that was a great dialogue that I think out of it came a lot of. Um, a lot of information to allow us to move forward on ours. So okay. if that's if that's what we're wanting that was as at a board, the Uncom Center, right? Correct. If that's what we're wanting in our board, then I don't have any qualms about that. But um, it would just be what you would be open for. Um, if if we had Holly one week or Dilworth one week or a couple of week, I, I don't have a problem with that. I just want to hear from the cities what they're needing and how can we help make their jobs easier. Very good. Brian, did you have something? Well, uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, if we may then just continue that discussion because I think uh, I know when Commissioner Mojo talked to me about this, talked about it within the next three, four months, two, three months, this summer is it kind of the timetable. So uh, if, you know, I've got a person on my right here that will be coordinating quite a bit of this to make the contacts and things, we'll put memos together. So a time frame would be really helpful if when you'd like to do this, we would, we would move on down the road with this. And I, I, I think what I'm hearing is probably a round table discussion here at, at the courthouse with uh, who would want to attend. We'd send the invitations to the incorporated and unincorporated cities, not the townships, because we meet with the townships and then go from there on that, and we'll, we'll try to get that coordinating if uh, we can look at it. And maybe in the afternoon or morning of a board meeting would be, because then you're assembled here already, and uh, we'd have to advertise the meeting so that uh, all can attend. And 
Is that, am I kind of, are we on the right whatever, track? Whatever they're up to. Okay. Yeah, I don't, why can't we just invite them like we do the legislators to a board meeting yes. and to tell us what, uh, you know, that we're interested in hearing what their issues are for the county board and okay. what we can do to help them and, you know, and Good. we can take, you know, you can invite, you know, if they're interested in doing that, we can provide time for them to come to a board meeting on, you know, one every week for whatever it takes or you know, something like that, I guess. Is that what you're thinking, Jenny? Something I like think that. whatever would be of their interest. Yeah, what you know, they if we do, send out those emails that say, or letters that say, we want to have a dialogue, if we have an enormous amount of response, then maybe it would have to call for a larger meeting if we only have I think a it's few. Too early to tell they want to be in it? That's, that's right. great. But. Well, I, 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 I I think it's a great idea that that we invite them, and I I, I personally like what uh, Commissioner Whalen just said about inviting them here and, and having the dialogue one city at a time or whatever like that, because each of the cities might have different exactly. issues that they want to talk about, and not only that, but it gives them an opportunity for everybody else who has the ability to view us uh, online or or whatever to also listen in and hear uh, some of those. They might be issues that we share together and there might be some that are important to them that we need to be considering uh, is how we can, uh, you know, what we send, uh, we've sent out many resolutions of support to the city of Moorhead for things. But we don't, we don't really hear from the Hollies and the Dilworths and the Barnesvilles and those places. Are they actually uh, looking at legislative issues for their communities that we don't even know about that maybe we could lend a hand and support on. You know, so there's, I, I like the idea. But it, in, in terms of the jail and the LEC, maybe I was misunderstanding what was being talked about before because I, I still think it's critical. And, and I think it's gonna be um, like Grant and I as members on that, I think it's important for us to go to them, to talk to them there regarding those projects and the referendum. I, I think they they deserve and want to hear. I think that's yeah. great, and I, I think they would also be appreciative of that. Yeah. I, I, no, I just want to reiterate that I feel that right. they're, they're two separate right. meetings. Hey, um, as far as my report, Tuesday night, I did go to a planning commission, which Jenny has covered very well. Um, Wednesday, uh, Historical Society, we discussed uh, um, how the Comstock House, they, they took over handling the Comstock House and we got a report from Matt Item on what he's doing there and how they're fixing it up and all the programs that he plans on doing for the Comstock House. Um, uh, pretty much took care of that meeting along with regular routine stuff there. Um, Thursday, Metricock, um, there we're starting to get involved with the uh, the North Dakota Department of Transportation had a guy, their person there giving a presentation. Uh, we we'll also have the Minnesota Department of Transportation. They're going to be part of the committee to give reports, monthly reports to us to see what it's going to be, what they're doing or how their involvement in this. And then last night, which we uh, went to the Buffalo Watershed Board meeting, and uh, I guess we've discussed that joint powers agreement enough that we. Probably nothing said about that would be best. Um, okay, Brian, you got two minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay, just for clarity, what what uh, we will do is we will send letters to the different incorporated and unincorporated cities, um, inviting them to a board meeting to present topics to the and and communicate with the county board as to what their concerns are and we'll treat it much like we do with the departments updates at the board they can come in you know, one or two if, if that's the case but we'll schedule them out uh, over a period of time yeah. okay great thank you um the uh you just heard on the diversion issue now i i think you received an update on this Tomorrow afternoon at 5.30, there will be a five entity a financial update meeting at 5.30 over at City Hall. And then on Thursday, it's the same meeting at 3.30 prior to the board meeting at the Diversion Authority board meeting at That's on the financial day. plan. That's on the financial plan. So if you have inquiries as to how this is gonna be paid for, um, you can attend that five entity meeting. So 
just wanted to make sure you have that. Um, <clears throat> we signed the second to the last purchase agreement on the properties that we will have available to up, us up here. If you remember, just to refresh your, your um, memory, we had two that are not interested in selling. We only have one person now that we have not obtained a purchase agreement from. Uh, we'll see where that goes, uh, but uh, uh, we'll we'll approach him in a, in another few weeks here to to see what he wants to do. So, but there's only one left that has shown interest in. So I think that's a, that's really making progress on that. Uh, we I met with the. Uh, Central administration managers this past week and discussed very topics of one would be the budget and, and where we're going with that. Um, I attended very briefly the city county land management meeting. They get together quarterly to talk about different issues between the city of Moorhead and, and uh, Clay County. Again, Moorhead and Clay County <coughs> communicate, but not necessarily reaching out to the others. So. Um, Got Vicky's retirement position received uh, and posted, but we've already talked about that. Uh, need to do a couple of evaluations this time again. Uh, met with your chair uh, yesterday for a little bit. Lori and I met with uh, Maury Lanning in regards to the case study, the wordage on the ballot, the timing for going to the legislature, who we need to contact at the legislature, what what memos we need approved and things, and these will all come before you before they go. So um, we're working through some things on that. I too attended the Buffalo um, Red Watershed meeting last night, and I did speak, and um, I spoke in the same tone that we did a year ago or a year and, and a half ago, that we felt that it was in the best interest of Clay County for them to be at the table for the discussions on these things. And I think um, Chairman Gross spoke about the very same issue, and that's what Bob Zimmerman spoke about. And, and we weren't trying to convince one way or the other just to, to have a dialogue on behalf of, of the water issues. Uh, you've probably read in the news the Masabi issue up at, uh, oh, I guess, I can't remember Buell, what, Minnesota. Buell, yeah. And that is closing, and we did have three uh, youths there, and they're being arranged to be taken taken out of there, and won't go into all of the hassles on that, but Rhonda and I had communicated two, three, four times on that to see um, when and what they should do as far as, and I think, Jenny, you were included in on those emails that we were communicating back and forth on, too. So um, I think all of our youths are out of there now. They're all, yes. Yeah. So, and the facility uh, now has announced that they are closing. Right. Uh, they were going to just suspend new intakes uh, while they sorted out some of the allegations. But I think with uh, the bigger metro city counties pulling uh, their youth, it's not sustainable for mm -hmm. them to continue operations. So they have announced that they will be closing their doors. So. We did, we did get them out, um, and we won't have an issue then when they do close. And, and as a result of that, now Steve Larson, juvenile director, is receiving more calls, and, and uh, because of that, too, the area they are trying to position themselves for where they're going to put the kids. I'm sorry, you said two minutes, Mr. Chair, and I got a little long. But I know you got to go. Sorry. Go ahead, Frank. I, I didn't expect that of you. It would stay within the two minutes. <laughs> Any, you no, thank you, Mr. Chair. Vicky, you want to give you a farewell speech? No, not yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to change her mind. Okay, just in case you. With that, we're adjourned. That's okay.